Okay, good evening, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and cut, get started. I think we have pretty much everybody in there. If I have to pause, uh, bear with me because there's other people that I do need to let into the meeting if they didn't use an APS login. So bear with me if I have to stop in the middle of uh, I'm talking or something like that so I can let people into, into the meeting. But again, I want to thank you guys for taking time out of your busy schedule uh, just to get some more information about uh, coming back to school in person beginning on uh, April 5th. So I think we have some information that we'll be able to share with you. Um, I know there's still a lot of uneasiness uh, as to what uh, what's going to take place. But the one thing I do um, want to restress uh, to to reiterate and restress to everybody is that we are ready as a school uh, to open up for our students. Uh, we've met all the compliance um, with the fire marshals, with the heating and the cooling and, and everything else that needs to be done with HVAC. So we're ready. We're just uh, really looking forward to having uh, your students back on campus. That's been the, the biggest thing that we've been missing this whole year is not seeing students uh, live and in person here at, at the school. So with that being said, uh, I do uh, kind of get started with that. I do want to remind everybody that um, as kind of the, the, the norms on this is that we do have a, a chat box that's up on the top right hand on there. Please use that to ask questions, but before you do that, um, we will be going over some information where you'll be able to put some questions in, in, a, in a Google Doc, so we'll be able to accumulate the, the questions and have those out there for, for you as a family. We did send out a survey for questionnaires earlier on, and we've been answering those questions, and those are live updates that we have uh, on our website. Um, so if you haven't accessed our website, uh, a lot of the questions that people have been asking have um, have been uh, answered and put on on that on our FAQ sheet from uh, now for reentering as as we kind of get back. So with that uh, being said, I want to just again get go back that April fifth, which is Monday, that's the day after Easter, um, we will start uh, coming back uh, with students coming in uh, in person learning here at the school. One of the things that you do need to realize as a parent and a student, if you're listening on, is that school, the way it was done pre-pandemic, is not going to be what the school was pre-pandemic. So, so you, you do need to know that as, as we kind of move forward. We do have all our staff that's been back on campus this week uh, working and getting uh, the rooms ready for, for students that are wishing to return. Again, for you parents that are still kind of... Uh, uh, kind of on the fence, kind of unsure about safety and all that uh, for for your for your student and for the rest of your family as well. I totally understand, and that's available. You can kind of you can still remain on remote um, as well as we kind of go forward. And one of the things that we'll kind of go over is how this is going to work um, for your student if they are either in remote or they're they're in person here at the school. Uh, we'll kind of go through all that right now. The one thing that I do want to share that's in our uh, uh, chat box is right now um, we don't I don't need anybody to sign in because I am recording this uh, so that way we can put this on our website for parents that couldn't uh, access uh, the, the meeting tonight that they'll have access to this meeting as well um, so so it'll be there one of the things that's in our chat box that Miss Springer just put in there and this is the survey that we had actually sent out prior to spring break uh, to get information whether you were thinking of returning uh, for in-person or staying remote. And then more importantly, part of that questionnaire was is if you needed transportation um, to fill that out with the buses, because uh, as we go forward, we did get our bus schedules here today um, for the bus routes for those of you that need transportation to and from school. But the one thing I do need to caution you on this is that some of the bus routes might have been condensed because they were getting the information based on the feedback off the survey. So if in the past you've had some bus routes close by, that bus route might possibly be moved a little bit further because they did have to condense some of their bus routes because of uh, the lack of bus drivers at this particular time. But if you have not done that survey, I urge you to do that survey that's in the web that, that's on our chat box to fill it out. It won't take you very long to get it filled out, but you'll be able to uh, to fill that out. And then we're able to get a, a better idea of uh, 
who's actually going to be coming. But more importantly, it's for transportation. So that way that part's going to be uh, taken care of for your student uh, to have the, the transportation issue addressed with, uh, with you at this particular time. Uh, next we have in there is kind of, uh, we do have our FAQ survey and Miss uh, Misty, uh, our Horning, our uh, librarian has put that in there. And I'm going to kind of uh, turn this over to her for her just to speak real quick. Uh, what the purpose is that, uh, that we have that, that we're able to uh, generate questions that, that you have on there. We're able to answer it and then it goes on live so that way everybody can kind of see the questions. So that's why it's important that you kind of look at the, what's what's been asked before you ask because a lot of times when we open that up there was multiple questions in the same areas that we condensed everything into to one area so at this particular time i'm going to turn it over to um, miss horning so she can kind of go from there thank you mr griego um so i am going to share my screen with everyone just for a moment so that i can show you the form that we're talking about um We've created a Google form and it is open for anybody to ask any sort of questions you might have concerning coming back to school. And um, we ask for your email address just so that way um, if it if we need to send you a personal response because you have a very specific question, we can respond back to you. And all what you need to do is you go to the form click which of the topics you your um, question concerns. It could be about attendance, it could be about transportation, or it can be about other. And any of these, click on it, and then you, you're able to type in your question. Once you have that um, typed in, it goes to a document that I continually check and update. And Mr. Griego um, lets me know what the answers are for the questions. And we've posted it on a Google Doc that you are also able to access. And I just put that link into the chat box as well. But this is the frequently um, asked questions so far that we've received from parents and students. And so um, I've broken it up into the categories. So we've had one question for attendance, one about graduation, um, a few for in the other category, um, school sponsored activities and transportation. Within this document too, I have included links for you. So um, Mr. Griego, I'm sure we'll talk about the class schedule and it gives you a link. If you just click right here that says classes will follow the schedule, it gives you our bell schedule of how we will be running our lunches next week and for the remainder of the school year. Also, if you did have questions and concerns about buses, um, I put the link on um, where you can find your bus routes for the AP on the APS website. I put that link there under transportation. And the survey that Ms. Springer, um, that Mr. Diego just mentioned that Ms. Springer had posted, I had posted that here as well on the document. So there is a link there that you can go to and that's the survey to let us know if your child is planning on coming back to school and if um, he or she, or they are gonna need um, any type of transportation. So there are some questions that have already been posted. So I urge you to look at this document um, first, and then if you still have another question, to go to the form and just type in your question. I will be um, looking these over tonight and adding them and sending sending them to Mr. Griego. So hopefully by tomorrow afternoon at noon, you should have your answers. Um, but I think that's it. Any other um, anything else, Mr. Griego, that I missed? No, uh, I think you pretty much covered it all on that one. And again, um, before you start asking the questions on that, um, let us go through the presentation here tonight, because I think some of the questions that you're going to be uh, asking or thinking about, hopefully we uh, um, we talk about it and kind of answers your questions. And then if you still need some better clarification, then fill that out and send it to us. And so by using this, it, it makes it a lot easier for us to to keep track of everything that's coming uh, that, that's coming about on this, because um, like I said, this is very new to, to everybody um, as we kind of go through this process where basically we're opening up school in April. Um, again, August, April, they both start with an A. I guess that's why they, they picked uh, April 5th. Uh, 
which kind of referred to, to August, but it is what it, what it is. And so we're kind of looking forward to that. The next thing I do want to have on here and uh, the, the big thing I wanted to show to go over is um, I'm going to have Mr. Worley to pop up our schedule on there. And I want to uh, go over what the schedules are going to uh, look like for everybody. So this schedule that will start on uh, April 5th is a schedule that all students, whether they are in remote or in person, everybody will be following the schedule. So it's going to be important how you uh, how uh, you look at this because it's going to be very similar to the schedule that we had pre-pandemic for those of you that have been at Valley uh, in in the past. Uh, the only difference is is going to be the lunch schedule because we did have to we did have to incorporate two lunches in the past we've always operated with just one lunch and so um so now we do have two so beginning on april 5th mondays is going to be a c day so again you have zero hour that'll start at 6 25 to 7 15. uh first period will go from 7 25 to 805 so that means everybody uh whether you're remote or if you're there at the school classes begin uh, for first period begin at 7 25 and uh and it'll end at 8.05. And so then you go to second period, uh, and then the kids that are in remote would actually know, uh, would, would, would follow the, the schedule there, the third. Then we have advisory on Monday that that hasn't changed uh, on there, so we do have an advisory. And then fourth period, this is where the lunches kind of start falling. Uh, money's going to be a little bit, um, uh, I get, it gets real uh Time-wise, uh, it gets real hairy with the time on there for fourth and fifth period because of uh, the lunches and, and because everything is so condensed. So at this particular time, I'm going to turn over to Mr. Worley to, to uh, explain how the lunches work. But before I turn it over to him, I want everybody to really look at the schedule that he presented at the very top, at the very top of the schedule. And this is the schedule I sent out to you. If your student, okay, is in... Any hallway that's A, B, S, or the gym, that is the maroon group lunch. Okay, so that's when they will have lunch with the maroon group. If your students have classes in um, C, D, E, uh, music, uh, J building, and the pack, they will have the gold lunch. So they'll, uh, so so you, they'll, the, the students will be able to pick this up. The other thing I do want to let everybody know uh, on here is that you need to have your students get on their phones or get back into their Synergy and they're able to pull up their class schedules on their phones or off Synergy and they're be, they'll be able to know exactly which teacher, which classrooms they actually have uh, for those first days. So that's one of the things that you're going to have to uh, let your students know. And that'll be something that'll go out again on Sunday's uh, update uh, that goes out to, to the families for Monday for everybody to, uh, to really uh, download their schedules onto their phones um, off uh, their Synergy. So at this particular time, we'll turn it over to Mr. Worley and he'll go from there. Good evening, folks. So if we're looking at Monday, lunch will be during or at the same time as fifth period. So as you can see on the left-hand side of the screen, if your student has their class in A, B, S, or the gym, right after fourth period, they go to lunch. If your student has C, D, E, J music or the pack for their fifth period class, they're going to go to class after fourth period. And then after the lunch period for the first group, then we switch. And then we just finish the day as normal. Everybody back in classes all, to, all together, sixth and seventh periods. Wednesday and Friday, although the times are a little bit different, it's still based on the fifth period class. So they'll have the same lunch Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for sure. Tuesday and Thursday, which lunch they attend is based again on which hall they are, but this time it's based on which hall they're in for fourth period. 
On the Tuesday, Thursday, because of the timing, after second period, all students will go to their fourth period class. Those who are in the maroon group will go to their class for about 45 minutes. Then they will have a lunch break. Then they'll go back and finish class. All fourth period. The gold group will stay in their fourth period for the entire period. And at the end of their period, at 11.55, they would then go to their lunch. And then after that period is, uh, is over, everybody goes back to sixth period. All of our teachers will be going over this next week um, in the fourth and fifth period classes also, just to help students kind of get used to where they're going next, what the next um, situation is for them. I'm going to put into the chat box a link for you so that you will have this schedule. Sorry about that. Um, so, so again, with this schedule, uh, for you as a parent, it probably feels like it's real complicated, but the students, once they know with which hallway they're going to be in, uh, they'll, they'll start figuring that out. And again, like I said, the very first week, um, the first day, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be tricky with what they need to do, but, uh, but we'll, we'll all uh, get through this and start figuring this out. The other thing I know that, uh, that you, uh, that I'll be going over this a little bit more is that tomorrow we do have a Viking journey orientation for those freshmen that have never been on campus and even under upperclassmen that have never been on campus. So we are having a from 10 to 12 tomorrow there at Valley High School. So if you're able to send your student to tomorrow between 10 and 12, um, we're going to be giving uh, tours and kind of going over exactly what uh, how, how the layout is there at Valley High School and where their classes are going to be and we'll, we'll be walking them through uh, through their schedules and so forth. And then we'll also be serving them a, uh, a lunch on the way out so that way they know, get an idea of exactly how the lunch is going to be working at during uh, the, during the lunch period. So again, going into this, like I said, uh, for those of you that have been there at Valley High School are kind of familiar with the schedule that we actually had uh, on there with the, the exception of, of the two lunches and, and, uh, and we'll kind of go from there. Now, one of the things that you do need to, to be uh, made aware of is that this schedule for students to be considered in class Everybody needs to log on. If you're in remote, they need to log on at the beginning of each class. What the teachers are going to be doing now is they're going to be working um, off and on with uh, the teacher, with the students that are there in, uh, in person and actually working with those students that are in remote settings. But at the very beginning of each class, the, the teacher will be going over um, the, the subject matter, what, what's going to be taking place in that particular class at that time. And then uh, the students will start working on, on their work. And that means that the students that are doing remotely are able to log off and start doing the work that needs to be done. And then she, then the teacher, uh, he or she would be working with the students there uh, in class uh, with their assignments. And then vice versa, where the teacher will start working at, at a certain point in the class and the teacher will then start uh she'll have uh he or she will have those uh students log back on that are on remote to come back on so that way they can uh, offer some additional help for those students that are on remote and at that particular time the students that are in the classroom at that time will actually um, be working independently in work that they actually have so that's kind of how uh, it's going to be set up for for your students when uh, they're going to be coming here on campus or for those of students that are actually remote is how it's going to be broken down that way. 
The other thing um, uh, that, that you do need to, re to, again, to remind your students is that they, they do need to go into uh, student view and to uh, into their Synergy email and, and they can download their class schedule so that way they actually have it so they know exactly which classes that they need to go to, whether they're in, um, they're in person or they're in, in remote. So that's, um, so that's how uh, that's gonna be done. So it's gonna be important that, that you relay that message to your students at that particular time. Uh, the next thing that I do have, and again, I'll turn it over to, to Mr. Worley and we're gonna show you, I did send out a link this past weekend and it has a lot of your, um, a lot of the concerns that have been uh, arise. And we're kind of going to go through that slideshow that we actually have on there about the reentry because it goes from everybody having to wear masks, transportation, and so forth. So, Mr. Worley, if you can pop that up there, and then we can kind of go through uh, each and how how they can uh, navigate uh, that uh, that slideshow that we that we put together. If we can uh, put that one up, and we can kind of go from there. Here it comes. So again, I will put this link in the chat box in just a few moments. But this little Google site will tell you a lot of information um, if you'll just click through to see what all we have here. There is information about, you can see on the left-hand side, these are all the different places you can go to. But we've got information about the reentry, information about students who are staying remote. The schedule is, is actually on here also. Information about mask wearing by students on campus. Um, information about... Uh, the signs and symptoms for COVID and when you should or should not send your your student to school. Uh, information about what we do and do not have available for breakfast and lunch. All of the transportation information, including down at the bottom of that page is a link to click on to get all of the bus routes, the morning and the afternoon bus routes. So you can check to see where the pickup locations are and what times, uh, what the classrooms will look like, all kinds of great information for you to find out about um, what's happening and what we're doing um, to make everything safe for your student to come. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Worley. <clears throat> the other thing that we do have, and I want to kind of sh uh, share that again with you too, is that we did have our uh, digital photography class, Mrs. Carnes. She had some of our upperclassmen coming over the spring break and they made a short little video <coughs> of uh, kind of uh, what we were showing you on there. So we want to, uh, if you can put that up and play that again, uh, Mr. Worley, so everybody can kind of see that with what our uh, <coughs> class, uh, Ms. Carnes has actually put up.
Okay, thank you, Mr. Worley. And I know uh, it was probably hard to, to hear the, the the voice on that, but if you access the that um, that website, it's a YouTube video that we actually did. Uh, you'll be able to hear the voice and all that stuff. But that's a, another quick snapshot of uh, of everything that's kind of on the other slideshow that we had presented prior to that. The other thing I do want to kind of go over with you with what's going to take place for those students that are actually on campus on the learning is going to be the cleaning process. So. One of the things that's going to be required from uh, from the teachers and actually from the students uh, when when they're in the classroom is that we do have wipes that will be uh, put in each one of the the in all the classrooms that the students after they finish uh, that particular classroom we're going to have to get uh, they're going to have to get into the habit of actually wiping down the desk that they were actually in prior to them leaving um, that uh, that class period and moving on to the next one and what we've done is that we've set up each of the classrooms now. Uh, because they've uh, they've uh, the CDC and the, the health have changed the guidelines for us to actually uh, to do the social distancing um, with what we have to do in the classrooms. <clears throat> it went from six feet to to about uh, three feet. <clears throat> so what we've done is that each of the classrooms uh, that are regular education classrooms is that we have a max of twenty eight desks in, in a classroom uh, for those uh, students that have special ed classrooms. Those ones have been topped off at a max of uh, of twelve desks uh, in those particular classes um, uh, there in special education. So what we've done with the teachers and we've had them, and like I said, we'll we'll get a better feel during that first week. Is that whatever class they have first period, whatever the desks were used from, whatever students were there, those students will get into uh, and get into a habit of getting the the the, the wipes that we actually have in there. That they'll be able to wipe off their desk and, and the area that they were working in and they'll be able to throw that wipe away on their way out to their next class but what we're encouraging our, our teachers to do is that whichever desks were not used from that previous class is to use the other desks for the next period class so that way it gives it a little bit more time just for everything to uh to get disinfected and so forth but uh, we do have uh, the, the wipes that we'll be doing on a daily basis after each class period. And then our custodians have been uh, going in and they've been doing a really good job uh, in the evenings right now is going by and doing the deep cleaning with, with some thorough disinfecting that, at night. So that way all the classrooms <clears throat> are ready for the, for the next day. One of the other things that you'll be seeing if, the, if you happen to, to come on campus, um, but at this particular time, again, there's no visitors allowed. But uh, you would be seen is that you'd be seeing our custodial staff out and about more often where they're going to be uh, touch cleaning all the high touch areas throughout the campus uh, a lot more often throughout the day. So uh, our custodial staff, our, our day custodial staff will be working out, um, going, touching all the different doors, cleaning those, disinfecting those doors in a more frequent uh, basis uh, than what uh, we've done in the past. So that way uh, those are getting disinfected. And like I said, all the high touch areas. Those will be cleaned a lot more often. And um, Mr. Dahl, our buildings and ground person, has uh, been putting them on a schedule as to how often that they need to go out and about and, and start cleaning all the, the high touch areas. One of the things that I do wanted to, to, to stress again, I wanna go back to the busing issue, <clears throat> is that if your student is a CEC student, <clears throat> there is no busing to CEC. I, I think they've already gone this, uh, they've already relayed this message to all the students at the CC, but uh, CEC currently is going through uh, construction phase. So, so uh, their buildings are getting demolished and they're, they're getting um, refurbished and so forth. So everything is being pretty much done on remote. <clears throat> but I do need to let you know that if your student is in-person learning, uh, they're at Valley High School, but they have a CEC class, they will for their CEC class they will report to our, our performing uh, not to perform but to our lecture hall located there in C Hall where they will do their CE class their CEC class remotely from our lecture hall and we do have a staff member that's assigned to to that area so again if your student is on campus doing in-person learning and they have a CEC class whether it's at first block 
the second block or that end of the, the day block, and they're there on campus, they would report to the, uh, to the lecture hall and they would uh, do their CEC class from the, from the lecture hall there at Valley High School. So I just wanted to make sure that you're aware of that. I know that CEC has already been talking to those students, that there was no busing uh, for those students at that, uh, for, for CEC. So I just wanted just to make sure that you're aware of that as, as we kind of move forward. Uh, fine arts, if your students in fine arts, um, they will be doing, uh, and it's, it was a great relief that uh, they've been able to, to start doing this, is that um, students that have in band, that have instruments that where you're blowing into it and, and sounds coming out, all those instruments have to be done, uh, be played outside. And everybody at that, uh, that are in, in the band, those have to be uh, nine feet apart for the social distancing. So that that's a, a new thing that, uh, that came out from the PD uh, guidelines. So again, our music department, they will be able to conduct music and those will be done outside. Now, like an orchestra that are the, the, the string instruments, those will be able to be done indoors. Um, so, so if your uh, son or daughter's in orchestra, piano, that'll be able to be done indoors. If your son or daughter is in the chorus, uh, they can, uh, they can sing, but all the singing has to be done outside. Um, again, these are the guidelines that we have to follow the PED sent through us. And so we have that. So the teachers have been working on that with how they'll be conducting those particular classes at that particular time. If your student is in PE, we've already talked with the PE uh, instructors and how they're gonna be conducting PE. And right now there's no locker rooms available for students to be changing. So they'll be doing uh, some of their coursework, which they'll be doing it through their ingenuity, and then at the at halfway through there, then they'll be doing other type of uh, like a walk in the track or doing other type of physical activity outside with weather permitting for for those students to get some type of an activity going in. So that way they're not on the computer the whole time. So those students would actually be doing something like that in their, their actual PE classes. Um, the other thing I do wanted to to let everybody know too, our nurse has been very diligent in getting out the most uh, accurate information to the staff. Uh, to let them know with what actually needs to be done. And, uh, and, and so, so she's keeping them uh, posted with everything that, that's going on uh, on there for, for the guidelines. So our nurse has been uh, doing a tremendous job doing, uh, doing that as, as we kind of move forward. The other thing too, uh, just to, again, what, what I really want to stress to, to everybody is that this is all new to everybody. It's gonna, it's gonna be new for the teachers having to teach in person and remote. It's gonna be new for our students coming back onto campus. Um, I think uh, for some of them, they've been sheltered. Some of them more sheltered, more so than others where they haven't really gone out and done things. They've just stayed within their immediate family. So for those students coming back, we uh, we, we really want to to engage those students to, to get kind of get back. One of the things that we're really working with uh, with our staff to, to really be looking at is that, yes, we, we really wanna look at the academics that, that's coming on there. But more importantly, we need to really look at the social, emotional well-being of your student because for some of our students, um, and, and some of you that, that are on here can attest, some of our students have had a very traumatic year in this pandemic phase uh, where they've had some uh, major losses with their, within their families, with their loved ones and so forth that we have no idea um, what's going on in, in their lives. So it's gonna be, uh, important that we're really looking at uh, the social well-being on there with uh, with, uh, <clears throat> with with your students as, as we kind of come back. And that's one of the things that we're really working with our staff to, to really start making those connections with those students when they come back, uh, making them feel welcome. And for a lot of these students, uh, it's, it's going to be kind of a shell shock where they've been, like I said, they've been out for um, for over a year. And for some people, they've actually been um, more sheltered than others, while well, some, well, some of the other ones who had the luxury of maybe going out and about a little bit more, but for some of them, they didn't have that just because of the health and, and safety well-being of, of their immediate family. So again, that's something that we're really gonna be looking at and working on that as we kind of uh, go through for, uh, as we kind of move forward uh, for this coming school year. I did see somebody that raised their hand uh, on there and, um, if um, you did have your hand raised up, if you want to unmute yourself and ask the question, we, I can go from there. Oh, 
Okay, it was an accident. Okay. You thought I wasn't paying attention. Oh, there you go. So again, I really encourage all of you though to uh, really be looking at the that um, FAQ uh, thing that we did sent out. So if you do have some questions, we can answer it. And then actually, um, you might be asking that question, but other people might have it on their minds. And so if we get it out there, we can actually answer that question. It'll be out there for people to uh, uh, to at least get the answer and know what needs to be done. One of the things that you do need to, again, I, I have to re-emphasize this and I'll re-emphasize it again on Sunday, is that you really, you do need to have your students go into their Synergy and download their schedules onto their phone so they know exactly uh, what their schedules are. When they look at their schedule, it's gonna have their teacher and it's gonna have the room number on there so they'll know exactly which room they have to go to. And again, those lunches are, are determined by what classrooms they have either fourth or fifth period. So that's where they, they need to know. For most students, they might have this. For some of them, based on, on their classes, they might have uh, a maroon lunch one day and they might have a, a gold lunch the other day. That's, but that's just the way it, it falls with where uh, their class schedule is on, on that one there too. So it is important that they, uh, they download that schedule so they know exactly where they're gonna, uh, where they need to go to on that. Um, at this particular time, I think I have, I've covered everything that I wanted to, to kind of go over on this. If anybody has um, a question, uh, you can um, go ahead and uh, raise your hand and I can call on you. Now, Mr. We do Diego? Have, yes, go ahead. It's Mr. Worley. Um, there was a question in the chat that you might want to answer. Um, I'm trying to find it so I could. Um, Marsha D. Evans asked, will students be able to attend in-person learning on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, then remote learning on Tuesday, Thursday? No, uh, what's gonna happen is once the students actually make the commitment, they're gonna be coming uh, in-person learning. It'll be required for them to be coming uh, in-person learning all five days out of the week and vice versa. If you're gonna stay remote, you'll have to stay remote for, for the five days. Now with the district, what we're, what we're looking at is we're going to be looking at for, for parents to make that decision in the next, uh, after about a week uh, on there for them to actually make that decision, whether they're going to do one or the other. But, uh, but once they've committed, they, they, they need to be coming on campus uh, the whole time. And that was one of the reasons what we're, what we're looking at is that we're going to be going off with all the teachers that are kind of keeping us a, um, uh, a tag of exactly which students are, are there. So that way we know who needs to be on there and if they're not going to be on campus uh, where they're going to be uh, uh, marked on there. The other thing I do need to let you know is that uh, attendance is going to be taken each period. So that's why it's important whether your students in remote or they're in person that they're actually able to uh, to get uh, <coughs> um, to, to log on during those particular time because the teachers will be taking attendance uh, during that, that time frame. So it's important that uh, they're logging on and then they log off if they're doing remotely at the time that the teacher uh, tells them to, and then to, to log back on at a certain time for, for them to do closure for that particular class. Another question I kind of saw that was popping up there. Yes, students are encouraged if they want to bring their own lunch, that's fine. Um, that they can bring their own lunch, uh, that's fine. They can bring their own lunch. We are encouraging the students now that the weather's nice is to, uh, once they grab their lunch, is to, to be eating outside. But if you saw how our cafeteria is, all the desks are going to be facing one direction and everything is spread out in, in uh, um, in, in a social distancing form so that way we do have access for those students to if they wish to eat indoors that's fine but we're going to encourage the students to actually eat outdoors if, if possible the other thing i do wanted to re-emphasize to you is that <clears throat> when you look at the desk in the in the classroom in the past we've all we kind of a lot of teachers were doing a lot of like group works where they put the desk kind of like in uh in groups of four and so forth uh, that's not going to happen uh, now that we come back and i don't see it happening in the, in the near future um as of yet, but uh, what we've done is that we've had uh, all the desks will be facing in one direction. And so uh, that's how it's gonna be set up for, for right now. So again, the way we've done uh, things pre-pandemic uh, is gonna not happen that way. We're gonna be looking at uh, how we do things differently. And so you'll see the, the classrooms a little bit uh, differently on there. I did see a question in there about uh, their students is in the, the district success program. Please get in contact with Ms. Slayton. 
uh, because she is the one working uh, with uh, those students and those families because their busing issues are a lot totally different from what we're dealing with with uh, the other with our other general population of Valley High School that that those are uh, group uh, routes. So if you are in the district program and you need busing, it is important to get with Mrs. Slayton because she is the one that has to set up the transportation uh, for your students if you're in that district program. Did I answer that, Mr. Worley? Yes, sir. Um, I, I answered a question in the chat about the final day for seniors, but I may be incorrect as to the dates for finals. I said the 6th and 7th would be senior finals. But I, no, we I were working on that. No, you know what? We were working on that today because we, we got the district memo today because we are the first graduating class uh, this year which is May 10th, and uh, let me pull it up on my calendar so I can make sure I'm, I'm accurate with you. Right now, we're looking at for our senior finals, uh, it's going to be uh, April 29th and the 30th um, for the seniors is going to be their finals. is going to be that Thursday and Friday, the 29th and the 30th of April, because on May 3rd, uh, those will be makeups for any of the students that need to, to make up any types of uh, – uh, if they missed a final or anything or get for whatever work needs to be turned in, because on May 4th, we have to turn in our final graduation uh, list. The grades got to be posted on the 4th and we have to turn in our final graduation list um, by three o'clock that afternoon on, on the 4th. And then we have, I believe, on the 5th, we have the cap and gown distribution. But there's going to be some more information that goes out specifically to those senior parents because we, we are we, we have some different types of stuff set up. But that. I'll go into that more with this, the, those seniors as, uh, as we kind of go forward. So, um, but again, it's going to be the 29th and the 30th for their senior finals. It's early. So it, it's, it's, it's going to happen very, very quick. We do have our, uh, our, our, our Viking journey, uh, orientation tomorrow. I do encourage you, uh, uh, for your students to attend that, we, uh, uh, it'll be in for school by the arts. We do have some uh, ambassadors. We do have ambassador students, our upperclassmen, that'll be working uh, out there uh, and making sure that um, we get those students to the Performing Arts Center and they'll be uh, given tours and so forth as to what uh, uh, this guy wants to uh, uh, everything that needs to be done. I'll play with you. So I'm going to get off, babe. Okay. Okay. So we, we got that. Um, so, so, so that's what, so we, again, we have that on there. So again, if there's any other questions, go ahead and use that chat box. I'll kind of monitor that. If you can help me, Mr. Worley or uh, on there, if you can kind of let me know on that. Um, if not, again, that, that, that concludes uh, tonight's meeting. I, again, I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to, to get this, uh, this information on there. Again, I'll, uh, we'll post this, rec we'll post this recording here on our website. I'll get it to, um, to Ms. Carnes so she can get this posted. So that way, if you have other uh, family member or other uh, people that you have on there, uh, that, that weren't able to attend this, that they have access to this and, uh, everything will be on there. So again, I want to thank you for taking time out of your, your schedule here tonight uh, to be part of this. Hopefully we gave you uh, information to go on there. And like I said, we just need everybody to just take a deep breath. We're all in this together. Uh, it's, it's a very big learning curve on everybody's part uh, as we kind of move forward. But uh, again, I just I want to reassure you that the safety and the well-being of, of the students and the staff uh, there at Valley High School is of the utmost uh, importance for us. And that's one of the things that we're going to be looking at as, as we kind of go forward. Okay. Um, one thing I did fail to mention, and I do want to let you know, is that we do have, and I don't know if you saw that on there on, on, on that YouTube video, but there is going to be a student health screening uh, QR code. Uh, we're going to be having those students do that first period um, as, as they come on. So that'll be the way we're able to do contact tracing if, if need be, if, if we ever get a case that, that comes out there. So it's going to be important that your, that your student does that uh, QR code, that student health survey on a daily basis and that'll be done in their first period class on there. If your student for some reason does not have uh, a class for first period, but then they come on later on, 
uh, it'll be the first class, the minute they're on campus for the first time, they do need to do that because that is part of the process that we have in place is our reentry for uh, contact tracing if we have to follow that. So, we, so we'll go from there. So again, I wanna thank you guys on there. Again, if there's any questions or if you're afraid to ask any questions, I can stay on and you can ask some questions uh, with me um, afterwards and hopefully I can have the answers uh, for you. So again, I'll stay on a little bit longer if you wish to stay on there and I can, uh, you can ask me questions at that particular time. So again, thank you. Um, Mrs. Voskis, you asked a question that they can start, they can come to the jump start tomorrow. That's fine for them to get that. And if you're still undecided that that's fine, but at least they have an idea of where their classes are at that particular time. So I would encourage them just to come on there and then you can make that decision whether they're going to come back or not. Mr. Griego? Sure. Um, so I, I asked this uh, um, in that chat box or on that form that Ms. Um, Horny had put on, but what about seniors that have a free period? For example, my kid has, uh, he only has three classes, but he his third period is a free period. Okay, so once once they're on campus, we're, we're gonna we're gonna have an area for them to that they're gonna have to stay on campus. The only way that we're gonna uh, allow students to leave if they have an open period, like that's right before lunch or after lunch, uh, for them okay. to actually leave. So if they have an open period in the middle of the day, yeah. uh, we have access that they're gonna have to stay on campus, which would be probably in the library with Mrs. Horney, okay, uh, for them to do some other work or, or whatever. You but that but once they're on there, they're they're gonna need to stay. We're not gonna allow the students to be going and then coming back on uh, like we've done in the past. And then can seniors leave when, when they're done? Yes, so when, the, so when the seniors are done, so, so if the senior is done after fourth period, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. um, and, and they're done with all their classes, yes, we're going to have that. But that's why it's important that they have their, uh, their, uh, their schedule yeah. on the phone because they're going to have to show that when, when they leave campus. Okay, thank you. Okay. And then and also, Mr. I know you – hold on, because uh, I know, Alma, you said you do have a senior – I'm going to be sending out more specific information just to the seniors. Uh, what I like I've been doing on Sundays that pertain just to the seniors. I'll be sending out more uh, information on that because they're starting to finalize more things now for graduation. And I was in a graduation meeting today, uh, and it looks like a lot of things are going to get finalized here in the next couple of days. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. I think um, somebody else had, had a question. Oh, yeah. I did. Hi, Mr. Griegos. Yes. Um, I just – my kid's been honestly struggling at home uh -huh. and i is there any way for other than parent view to find out exactly where they are i mean tomorrow is what april 1st we're not talking a mm -hmm. lot of time and if he needs to do extra work what i need to do to help him make sure this happens um your best bet to do for right now is if you can send i'm going to give you my email address send me your student's name okay and that way i can look at that and then what we i can do is i'm going to have the teachers that your student actually have to get in contact with you asap so that way they can have that conversation with you as to what needs to be done to 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 salvage or or, 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 exactly. or get a better grade uh, now before for this grading period so if you can send me your student's name i will get contact those teachers to get in contact with you but more importantly when you send it to me i'm going to give you my email make sure your email is correct that, that you send it, you know with what you send me uh -huh. and my email is griego underscore a at aps.edu okay i appreciate this thank you sure i've been thing. stressing so much so oh, I, I can yeah. imagine i can imagine <laughs> Is there any other questions? I've got a quick question. Sure. Hey, um, just out of your total population, your, your, your total student body, how many students will be returning and how many will be, you know, doing the remote learning? Well, see, that, that's I'm why I, I don't know. Yeah. Well, and, and that's why I told the parents to actually redo that survey because as of today, I only had 26% of our population respond to that survey. 
And out of that 26% of our population, we had a hundred and there was 180 some kids that said out of that, that respond that we're wanting to return to in-person learning. So it's hard to gauge that 26% what we're really looking at because there's still a lot of families that haven't responded that they've said that their, their, uh, their students are coming on campus. So this is, I'm, this is me personally. I'm thinking that we're going to have probably about 300, uh, no more than 400 kids probably coming back. And, and that's just my guess based on what I'm looking at. And so that's why I, I, I'm really encouraging the parents to really do that survey so we can get a better accurate uh, uh, look at what we're actually looking at at particular time. Is the survey still available? Yes, we put it on the chat that, that's in there that you can go on there and fill it out to, to make sure that, that you get it done. So if you go into the chat box, I believe that survey is at the very beginning. You can uh, you can fill it out and, and do it right away. Okay. And and that survey that we're talking about, it falls under uh, Mrs. Uh, Springer, and there's a thing where it says, uh, so you can go to that one as well. Okay. So, Mr. Villar, did that kind of answer your question? Yeah, it does. Uh, you know, just to kind of give me a, a yeah. snapshot, you know, what what school is going to look like. Now, you know, mm. pre-pandemic, right. you know, if you don't mind me asking you, you know, what was your student body uh, headcount prior to all this? We were, we were at 1,100. Wow. So we were at 1,100 pre-pandemic. Okay, well, you know, I, I, I would say maybe in the coming weeks you'll get, you know, better numbers. Yeah, and like I said, I still think there's still there's still a lot of uncertainty even with the shots going on for uh, for, for a lot of the families. And I think, like I said, a lot of our families have suffered uh, a lot of losses in, in this. And so I think there's, there's still real uh, – um, uh, uh, with this process. So, so I think that that's what, what that's kind of playing into that as, as we kind of go forward. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, thank you for that information. Sure and, I, and I commend uh, you and your staff and faculty for, uh, you know, really making the effort to get these kids. Okay. All right. Thank you. They're supposed to be. Thank All you. right. Thanks. Is there any other questions? Uh, hello, Mr. Grego. This is uh, Stephanie Labels, mom. Yes. Uh, yes, I have a question. How she will know her schedule and colors for her, for her classes? Because here she's getting so much uh, trouble getting logging in to her classes all the time. Yeah. Um, okay, so what, uh, is she gonna is she gonna stay remote or is she gonna come to, to school in person? Uh, she is going uh, to school. Okay. What she needs to do is she needs to go into center into her into her student view account and uh -huh. go into her schedule and download that. It, that'll have her schedule. It'll have what she has first period, second period, third, fourth, and it'll have the the room numbers and everything that they have for uh, uh, for each of the teachers that they actually have. Okay. Thank you. Sure thing. Hey, do we have any other questions um, that kind of go from there? I'll wait a few more minutes at seven o'clock. So we pretty much hit it right within the hour. So again, I thank you guys for, uh, for, for coming on there. And again, I'll stay on a little bit longer if you have any other questions and we kind of go from there. But I do recommend for you to, if you do have questions, use the thing from Mrs. Horney. And again, if you haven't done that survey, please do that survey. So it gives us a better idea of what we're looking at uh, uh, for students on campus. Mr. Grego, you have a Spanish uh, from Ruby Mora Servin. She wants to know when are you going to uh, turn in the schedules for the students. Um, Senora, turn, turn one turn schedule. Their, their schedules are already in, in, in their uh, in Synergy. All they have to do is log in there to pull out their, 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 their schedules that they currently have. 
Senator Servin, as, as sus uh, cédulas ya están en, en su uh, student view, en el, en el student pro esta, y ahí de una vez pueden ver su cédula de ellos. Mr. Griego, another question. Sure. Um, what about like clubs, like book club, um, academy? Are they going to still meet, meet virtually, meet at yes. work? Yes. Yes. What What they're going to be doing is a lot of the clubs and organizations are, will still be meeting. They're going to have to change because in the past we only had one lunch, so it was easy for them to meet during lunch. But now because we have the two lunches, a lot of the sponsors are going to be looking at how they set things up, like in the after, like after school, and everything's going to be done remotely. Uh, I did talk with Mrs. Group uh, from the Mesa program. I'm going to use that as an example because I did have that conversation with her this afternoon. Is that what she's going to do on certain days? Is she uh, the students that she act, that are actually there on campus? Uh, they'll stay after school, and so uh, if you're familiar with uh, with Mrs. Group, how she has her her uh, CAD room, it's it's really big and, and open. So those kids would actually stay on campus to uh, for the meeting, but she'd actually be doing a, a virtual meeting at the same time as well. Okay, thank so, you. So a lot of those things are going to happen again. It's going to be up to each of the clubs and uh, sponsors uh, for, for them to start conducting those meetings. Okay, thank you. Sure. Uh, Mr. Uh, Grego, Mari sure. Ansuérez says, mm -hmm. uh, for Jose Luis says, dice que no tiene clases los lunes. Uh, they don't have classes on Mondays. Uh, señora, los clases, ¿cómo que no tienen clases los lunes? Si puede responder en voz. Ponga su mic y responda, yo le interpreto al señor Griego. Ah, buenas tardes, uh, mi nombre es María, soy la mamá de José Luis Encarnación. Mm -hmm. My name is uh, María and I am José Luis Encarnación's mom. Siga. Eh, yo he estado al pendiente de que cuando él entra a las clases y yo le pregunto sobre sus tareas y si entró y todo, y a veces él me muestra que ha terminado tareas o que ha estado en clases, pero sus calificaciones o sus grados me muestran que están en F. Y yo he hablado con él y me dice que no sabe qué está pasando. So, mom, mom dice that she has noticed that she notices that her son gets logs out of class, but also notices that he doesn't finish the work. He finishes the work but he still has low grades and she was wondering what is happening ahora comenzando el lunes yo lo puse que no pero no sé si pudiera cambiarlo para que él pueda asistir y se sienta un poquito más acoplado y no sé si pueda hacer algo para que tenga mejores grados so she stated that i asked uh, that uh, if uh, her son was coming back on monday she said no but she's thinking about it now and she's, she thinks better that it might be better for him so he can get some help from the teachers and from, uh, from his, his classes. Um, but she's just worried about that. Yeah, uh, we probably need to do, uh, Brenda, if we can get his name and all that stuff so we can look all that stuff up tomorrow. We can find out from the teachers what's going on so we can, and then get a, uh, uh, a contact so we can get back with her tomorrow after we find out from the teachers what's going on so we can go from there. Señora, si, si me puede dar su información o me puede llamar mañana en la mañana usted 
a la escuela. Yo soy Brenda Chávez. Me llama al número 505. Ok, permítame agarrar un lapicero para anotar su número. Ok. I'm having her call the school so that she can give me the information so that uh, whatever is private. Ok. Ok. And then, uh, Crystal, I believe you have your hand up, Crystal Martinez. Hold on one yes. second. Hold on. Um, señora, yo soy Brenda Chávez. Mi número de teléfono es el 505. Sí. 345. Ok. 9120. Ok. Extensión 50. I mean, perdón, 5400. Ok. Y, y me habla a mí y yo voy a tomar la información. Y a, a ese tiempo le explico lo que acaba de decir el señor Griego y la información que tiene que, que darle a él, ¿ok? Ok, está perfecto. Muchísimas gracias. gracias. Ok, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Ok, Crystal. Sure. My question is, um, if our student returns to campus and they and we decide that it's not a good fit for them, um, are they going to be allowed to go back to online learning? Yes. As a matter of fact, uh, we're, uh, we're trying to work with the districts because they, they did say that they wanted to kind of um, uh, give a time, time, timeline when, when they, when they have to, you know, fully commit that way. And I want to say it's going to probably be about two weeks after we get started that they're going to, uh, after two weeks, um, they're going to have to commit one way or the other. So, so right now, if, if, if they start uh, they're in person and they want to go remote right now, uh, we will work with, with those families at that particular time. Okay, and uh, another question. Will the students on campus be working on individual computers that they'll have to carry with them? Yes, every, every, every student, and if you looked at that uh, on there, is all the students have to bring their Chromebooks and their chargers every day. That, that's, okay. that, 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 that's a given. Okay, so if they don't have one checked out, then they'll have an if opportunity they don't, if, to do that. Well, if they don't have one checked out, uh, they need to make arrangements to meet with Mr. Uh, Hogan. Uh, and he's at Hogan underscore MP at APS.edu to schedule an appointment so he can check one out to him. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. Is there any other questions? Well, I thank you guys. Uh, again, enjoy the rest, rest of your evening. And again, thank you for taking time out of your schedule. And at this particular time, um, I will end this meeting. And stay safe and have a great um, Easter weekend. I have a question before we sure. get off. I apologize. Um, some of the parents have a lot of different questions than some of the students. Are you uh -huh. going to have kind of like a town hall like this for students to be able to ask their questions as well? Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, that's the next thing I'm going to be uh, trying to get set up uh, on there. Um, okay. How, how I can get the, the masses because it, it, it'll be a lot harder how I, I do the students because there's going to be a lot more than, than, than this as, as well. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Uh -huh. Bueno, thank you, Mr. Grego. Have a great okay, thank night. You. Thank Good you, Brenda. Night. Okay, thank you, guys. Bye, Brenda. Bye-bye, uh, Tilly. Bye, everyone. Thank you for joining. Oh, gracias por, por participando en, el, en, el, en esta junta. Have a good night. Everybody have a good night. Hey, Mr. Greco, real quick, there was one more question on there from a James Means, and I think he was asking if, since he's a senior and he doesn't have a third, or or his third period is distant learning, can he come starting fourth period? Say that again. So he said that his third period is distant learning class, so he wants to know if he can start coming for fourth period. 
and not have to be there for third. But he doesn't have a first or second? No. Okay, yeah, so he would be able to do, he can start fourth period. Okay. Yeah. So Thank you. Let me put, could you put that in the chat? Yes. Yeah. Okay, he heard us. <laughs> okay, thanks. Okay. Thank you. Are Bye. Any, are there any other questions? Okay, again, thank you guys. Be safe.